My name is uh, Joyce Macharia. I'm married to one great man, Mr. Macharia. I have been in this business for the last 27 years. I joined this company in 1993, having worked uh, in the Standard Bank, having worked also in car in general, and having uh, a bit of experience also from the government. I worked in Treasury uh, throughout my career journey. I joined uh, Mount Kenya Bottlers as an accountant. I am an accountant by profession, and I have grown through the landers as the organization have grown. Have also given me opportunity to grow up to where I am today as a chief executive officer of Pharmacy Beverages Limited. It's been a beautiful journey which I have enjoyed, and I thank God for the grace to go through that journey. Uh, Almasi Beverages Limited is a holding company for uh, Almasi bottlers. In 1976, 1977 and 1986, the shareholders of Amasi Beverages uh, formed uh, three bottlers. That was Mount Kenya Bottlers, Lift Valley Bottlers, and Kisi Bottlers. In 2012, through a transaction that was led by Centum, the shareholders came together and formed Almasi Beverages to own the assets of the three bottlers. Through a share swap that was done, so the shareholders of the bottlers swapped their shares for the shares of Almasi Beverages. And so Almasi Beverages now owns the three plants, that is uh, the plant in Yeri, a plant in Eldolet, and a plant in Kisi. That is Almasi Beverages. In terms of production capacity, uh, Nyeri is the biggest. In terms of area, or what you call the territory, Lift Valley is the biggest, and uh, Nkisi is a, is a reasonable size. Almasi uh, is a franchise of uh, Coca-Cola. So Almasi bottles, manufactures, and distributes Coca-Cola beverages. That is the soft drinks, the water, which is the sunny, and also the juices we call Minute Mint. And uh, currently, Coca-Cola also is in the verge of diversification, introducing a lot of products, uh, products with coffee, uh, products with energy, and also uh, like Powerade, and very many new products in terms of the customer's uh, demand. So basically, Almasi does everything Coca-Cola does in Kenya. I think I would say the merger and the consolidation was the best thing that happened to this business. I've told you I've been in this business since 1993, and it's been a long journey. That time we were running a single business. I was uh, running Mount Kenya, and the other three bottlers were running independently. A lot of sub-optimization of uh, utilization of assets, no collaboration, and uh, the shareholders were basically the same. In terms of uh, capital growth, we, we injected uh, we injected uh, money into the business because the business needed to restructure from a balance sheet perspective and also from a working capital perspective. And Centum read uh, that strategy in terms of uh, rights issue and we raised 16 million uh, from our shareholders. And together with the rest of the money that the business was making and the rest of the funding over the years, the company has invested about 50 uh, million USD. That investment was able to unlock uh, the challenges of working capital that was there and also the expansion uh, into distribution, expansion into production capacity and also the expansion in the market in terms of uh, cold drink equipment and uh, the distribution in terms of route to market, in terms of the trucks to deliver to the, to the distributors and also the forklift and all those that needed uh, to be done uh, to unlock the business. Uh, the other thing that happened is that with the increased and improved uh, working capital, you needed to make sure that your controls are good, uh, so that then that work capital is optimized, and uh, it is just within the, the business level. That was a great uh, thing that happened to the business, and basically that, that was a major unlocking uh, of the business as it were. 
So what the merger did is to bring uh, a sense of consolidation to the business. And what that did is it helped the businesses to optimize in terms of asset utilization, a capacity sharing, uh, rationalization of territories, whereby you could supply the territories of the Almasi beverages from any plant, uh, depending with where it was the most economical. What the merger also did is uh, to bring up, to build up a, a business that had a name, big, and a big brand. Almasi is a big brand. That that name, you could use it to your advantage in terms of negotiating with customers, negotiating with the bank, and therefore all that was made possible for by the merger and the consolidation. Well, I think as you know, Centum is an investment company. It's one of the top investment companies in uh, Africa. I think uh, as, a, as a business, this business was very lucky to have Centum as a major shareholder in the business. And uh, the role of Centum, first of all, was just to think about the strategy for the merger and to sell the merger story to the rest of the shareholders. It needed somebody who could help to understand the future of the company and the benefit of working together and the benefit of a big organization. It needed an investment company like uh, Centum to help the manager, to help the team, the stakeholders to understand that there was a lot of value that was locked in this business and also to help to see that that value can be unlocked if the companies came together. So the role that Centum played was really huge. And as, as we go along, you'll see the other, other than the strategy, the specific role that Centum has played being the major shareholder. One of the things that, uh, that was an opportunity for the merger was uh, the unrationalization of the unoptimization of the business. And one of the challenges that uh, we were having when we were single businesses was that you could not invest because the investments of these businesses are expensive. None of the three bottlers could be able to invest singly by themselves in the new capacities that was uh, necessary to develop. And therefore, the volume growth, the revenue growth was flat. You could not do more with the investments that were there. So what Centum brought through the merger is that uh, capacity to be able to invest uh, by capital growth in terms of uh, putting up money because we did a rights issue and Centum showed the confidence in the company by being the first to pick up or to pay up the rights issue and therefore when the, sharehold, the other shareholders uh, had confidence and they follow suit. And with that basic uh, capitalization uh, injection, capital injection to the company, it was easy to invest and therefore we invested in a returnable glass new line 40,000 bottles per hour line that just opened up the products opened up the increase in terms of capacity uh, new lines come with new technology so they are cheaper to operate they are more efficient they are fast and therefore the cost of the product was totally you know contained other than the other lines which which were quite expensive to produce with. So that was the major thing that really uh, Centum did. Then because of the, now the merger, you have a bigger balance sheet. You are able to, we are able to also get funded by the banks. We work with the banks and we're able to invest in another line, which is a PT line, uh, which is also at 36,000 uh, bottles per hour, which is a huge investment. And definitely those two investments just did the trick. We never used to have a PET. We used to have 100% RGB or re returnable glass. And competition had already come in with PET. And therefore, we were losing our market. Without those investments, I don't think we would be having a story to tell. So that is exactly how Centum came in and helped us to manage those investments. And today, you can say that the Almasi beverage has capacity to unlock whatever growth that, that is needed, even in the near future. Uh, in our country, we are used to, when you hear mergers and acquisition, the next sentence is retrenchment. 
and therefore as Kenyans we know when you hear merger as staff you start getting tension and uh, that tension can bring non-performance but I think it was different for pharmacy. One thing that uh, was clear is that there was value creation. And as a management, together with the board and with the support of St. Tam, we were able to sell that to the staff. And I think from the beginning, the staff knew very well that what is happening, the changes that are coming in the business are for our good, because they were already seeing the suboptimal sites that they were, fall they were managing and they could see that there was no more development, no more growth, and they were already facing that. And therefore, communication is so important. Keep your staff informed in what you're doing because they are the ones who deliver the business. You can buy good machines, but if you don't have skilled people to drive them, if you don't have passionate and motivated people to drive them, they will not work. And therefore, our communication strategy was very clear, very transparent, and the staff were informed in everything that we were doing at every stage. And therefore, we walked along. I can tell you, throughout the merger, we have not lost any person because of merger. People have grown because the business have grown because of merger, including myself. I was not the CEO before the merger. I grew to the CEO after the merger. And other people within the business have grown equally. And therefore, even for the employees, it has, a, it has been a beautiful journey. Also, in terms of, uh, Centum is very clear in terms of uh, staff development and just providing that environment for staff. And this is exactly what the learnings that Centum brought to the organization in terms of recognizing people, recognizing the performance of people. And when people perform well, yes, tell them that they have performed well. Share what the company is making with them because it is coming through their hearts. And that was also very powerful in terms of motivating the people. So basically, I can tell you we have a very highly motivated uh, people. You're very right. Uh, business is all about risk. And that is why it is important uh, who you work with and who are your, your partners and who are your stakeholders. And I think Almasi uh, Beefridges was lucky to have a partner like Centum. Uh, who is the, the, the staff in Centum, the management, the leaders there, they are highly experienced uh, in a lot of uh, many varied industries and therefore coming in they were able to bring to us uh, that just that risk mindset and we ran a system called uh, enterprise risk management whereby all our employees were able to go through the training identifying the risks, mitigating where you can mitigate it, and getting to know which list you must live with. I would say that during the journey, our risks have gone down uh, because of that, just that management of risk and uh, managing, being proactive. Also using the networks because uh, also Centum is, uh, is a highly networked organization where you have risks that are beyond you and beyond uh, the organization, then calling up upon support uh, from Centum to make sure that those leads are mitigated. But uh, by the time, for the time that Centum has been in uh, within the business, we have seen our risks go down, uh, whether it is uh, risk for other stakeholders, uh, negotiations with, uh, with government and with their stakeholders, and uh, whether it is negotiation uh, upfront, managing your risk with, the, with the, any stakeholders, I think it has been wonderful and they have really been supportive in that particular area. We also keep a very clear and updated risk uh, register, which means that we have a risk also attitude, that the people know that uh, the risks for the business are this and this is how we mitigate. So it has been a, a good journey also, running from their experience. Well. I think you will need to watch this piece because uh, after uh, a few months ago, Zentam have exited the business with a very clean uh, exit that we managed through all the due diligence without any major findings. And we've gotten a very major stakeholder, which is uh, Coca-Cola Beverages Africa. And Coca-Cola Beverages Africa coming in brings in a new story because this is coca-cola they are bottlers they understand the business and the synergy 
that is now going to be unlocked is not just within the region of Almasi, is the region of the whole country, because now Almasi gets exposed to the whole country, because uh, Coca-Cola does business in the whole country. It means that now we can produce our products and even sell them across. We can produce a product that the other bottlers are not producing and have an opportunity to sell it across to the other bottlers. And therefore, when I look at the business, the future is great. What do I see for the people? I think it's great opportunities, especially the young people. We have very young professionals here. Now, with the coming in of CCBA, they have been exposed to opportunities, not only in Kenya, not only in Africa, but in the world, that you can grow now from Mount Kenya, from Kisi, or even from Rift Valley, or from whichever county, and you can work in South Africa, you can work in Ghana, you can work in Dubai, you can work anywhere. And so I'm encouraging the young talents to be very positive and to see the opportunity because the future is just great for this, for this company. You see, everything in an organization like this starts and stops at the leader. You create a team, and once you create a team, you give the team the freedom to be. Because there is no one who wins alone. From myself as a leader, I do not sit here as a boss because I'm limited to what I can do. So my purpose is to see the best in each and every person in the organization and to help them to bring the best of themselves to be the best of themselves as they work and to make sure that they are properly rewarded, they are properly motivated, and I'm providing the right environment uh, for them to bring and to do their job. I recognize this because we spend most of our time at our working places. And therefore, we spend our time working together. So if you do not find relationship within where you are spending your days, away from your family and away from your other friends, then you could have a challenge. And I think for us as an organization, we have chosen to live together, to work together, and to win as a team, and we celebrate as a team. And I think for me, I have seen that very powerful culture that we have developed. Were we always like this? No, we were not always like this. Before the merger, we were very regional. It was very difficult for us to see ourselves as one, but we came up with programs and messaging to our people that we will only win when we are together. And I think it's a message that everybody understands. And uh, we do not have, uh, we do not have uh, any, any struggle in developing and in working together from the lowest to the, to the top. And then if you practice equity and fairness in the business, that everybody will be judged in the same way, then that equity brings the team and the team gels together. If the team is seeing their contribution to the results, you're not, you're not uh, the one who is winning. They are the ones who are winning because they are the ones who are driving the machines. They are the ones who are driving these trucks you see around. I can't drive a truck, so I can't sit here and pretend that I can drive a truck. But if the driver does a good job. He needs to know that he has done a good job, but he has driven the business, not only the truck, it's impact on the business. So we communicate a lot and we share a lot our results, our KPIs, our performances, we share a lot and we hold ourselves to account. Everybody knows what they are supposed to do and everybody takes responsibility of their bit. And together as a team, I think we win as a team. That's the best thing that has happened in this organization. You see, you've talked about the family. And one of the things that uh, Centum did, working with us, also became part and parcel of, of us as a family. And therefore, being informed of our challenges and our successes, and uh, working with us in solving our problems and solving our challenges, and celebrating our results. So as we were building this business, we were together and we were seeing step by step. And 
following up on the policy of the company that the staff know if we do well, we get a bonus. If we don't do well, we will not get a bonus. But there is something remarkable that Centum did. Because over time, you see we were in a change mode. Over time, fixing all the challenges that were there, of course, we were not going to get success almost instantly. So the success was coming in step by step. So the bonuses was going in step by step. So there is this year in 2017, when the performance just broke, the team just worked, everything just was aligned so well, and the company performed just very, very well. So when we calculated our bonuses within our policies, the money was so much. The money was more than the debit that we have been paying. And therefore, I think even when the staff they saw, maybe the staff didn't believe, ah, the shareholders going to give us 200 million plus as a bonus. I tell you, it was so exciting when the chairman of the board, uh, Dr. James Moria, came in and met the staff and told them, you have done it, you have earned it for yourself, and here is the check. You see, that was just, it, it was amazing. It is not easy to say what happened to the staff because if what we saw after that, the motivation just went crazy. The work just went crazy. And what followed that, even uh, in terms of the due diligence that came in almost uh, after some time, the support from this team, that's why you see even up to today, the company is intact. Even after going through almost one and a half years of uh, due diligence, through when the transaction is changing, the people know that it is us who do it. And when we do it, our shareholders are honest, they keep their promise and they do what they're supposed to do. It was amazing. It was very, very amazing. I think that is the, a story that will live on the employees for a long, long, long time. It, you know, uh, the products we serve are quality products. And when you work with Coca-Cola, you also become Coca-Cola. And therefore, whenever you go, you want to see a product. So our work is to make sure that each and every consumer has a Coca-Cola product at their arm's length. And arm's length is this, that you do like that. If you want water, you get it. If you want a Coke, you get it. If you want a Coke with coffee, you get it. If you want Powerade, you get it. And therefore, that's what we do. That's what drives us. So when you go to a place and you see your products being served, uh, especially if they are cold, and especially if they are at the right price, it is very exciting. It tells you and it reminds you of the humble responsibility that you have to continuously make quality product and continuously make sure that your products are leashing the consumers uh, who really need your products. So it is a humbling experience to see the service that you're giving to the people, uh, to see how uh, your products are amazing and refreshing the people outside there. Thank you. I think being a woman leader, uh, it is amazing how you feel in terms of just that desire to lift the other woman. A, a girl always wants to lift another girl. And I think that is how we are made. And therefore, when Coca-Cola brought this uh, program of 5 by 20, that is empowering 5 million women by year 2020, which KPI Coca-Cola has met and which we have met a bit. It was a very exciting program, which uh, personally I took and, uh, and we ran with it. And in within, our, within our territories, we have empowered more than a thousand uh, women. We give them our products, we train them, we introduce them to the business. And it is exciting to see how they have developed from the small businesses that we started with them to become even bigger and better. And some of them have even ended up being our own distributors of our products. So it's an amazing journey. And uh, like they say, when you empower a woman, you empower the whole family and you empower the whole community. Definitely, I am happy because uh, I believe this is a good story 
uh, I believe that when you run a business with uh, good governance and you can share it, uh, other people can learn from it and uh, other people can repeat from it. And uh, also from an investment perspective, I know Centum is a company that invests in many, many other businesses. And if any other leader has an opportunity to have Centum as a partner, I think any time I would want to have Centum uh, as a partner in my business because that uh, passion they bring, that expertise they bring, and they work with you, I think it is uh, something that a lot of our businesses, even in our country, uh, can be able to benefit from. I, I think the beauty uh, of, uh, of these businesses, and I, and I owe it to this business, we owe it to, to Centum. Uh, because as Centum was leaving, the company had been able to pay all its debt. And right now, it's, we are in a positive uh, debt position. Uh, we've cleared all the bank loans, and uh, we've cleared all the loans from uh, other stakeholders like Coca-Cola, and the company is ready for another takeoff. Yeah, so the debt position is, is great. Mm -hmm.